This episode is sponsored by Brilliant. SpaceX Starship Update and Crew Dragon Demo Mission 2 targeting May. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It. And as always, there has been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. Starship Update. Despite a recent illness that's been going around, SpaceX seems to be racing towards the next test candidate, serial number 3. Progress, as always, is very fast in Boca Chica and every single episode there is so much progress that the Starship updates have found their fixed spot in every video for months now. Besides building a possible future of spaceflight with the SpaceX Starship, the crew in Boca Chica has been very busy in recent months on building the needed infrastructure for an ever-growing and more and more accelerating prototype workshop near the Mexican border. A recent addition for this, evenly important, is a new smaller tent used for everything that does not require height. We already have three of these smaller tents and this will be number four. Alex Rex, aka Race to Orbit, did a fantastic job creating virtual flyovers of the Boca Chica construction site as an easy to understand way of following the progress. Check out his channel and leave him a subscription as a thank you for so much dedication. He will be able to monetize his work as soon as he hits a thousand subscribers, so let's push him over that hurdle together. I already left my sub for him, pause my video, click the link in the description and then come back to continue. Alex, you rock! Here you can see the general overview as it was on March 17th and one thing becomes apparent really quick. A lot has changed since Mark 1 was the next big thing. Workspace has easily quadrupled and it can't really be called a backyard workshop anymore. The dark area in the foreground by the way is already graded properly and it will soon be used for something rather important. When I visited Boca Chica only two weeks ago, this area looked like what you can see in my footage. As we all know SpaceX, this has vastly changed already though. This is what it looks like now. Large metal parts have been delivered and SpaceX has begun work on something that looks very similar to the high bay and the windbreaker. The space used for the new building is much larger though and the corner structures seem to be much beefier. This can only mean two things. Either it's going to be larger in area or it will be higher or both. So I guess it can mean three things. Either way, this building will most likely set a record for building size in Boca Chica yet again. One very possible use case for such a building would be for super heavy. As Musk recently unveiled on Twitter, internal construction plans have changed yet again and Super Heavy, the booster that will provide the necessary lift to get Starship into orbit, has grown slightly to an estimated size of now 70 meters. This is a plus of 2 meters, bringing the whole stack of Starship and Super Heavy up to a mind-boggling 120 meters of height and a liftoff mass of roughly 5000 metric tons. Compared to Starship, the booster needs an extra 20 meters of headroom to be stacked. High Bay 1 is not able to accommodate such a large construction even though it is rather large. So the only logical way to go is an even larger building to be able to start working on the booster. A booster that will be absolutely necessary if Elon Musk wants to send a Starship into orbit by the end of the year and re-enter it properly. But before that booster can be put to use, SpaceX will need a working Starship prototype. Work on serial number 3, the next possible candidate for static fires and short flights is continuing at a very fast pace. Stacking has continued over the past weekend and SpaceX has managed to get the total height up to 10 rings by now. This includes liquid oxygen tank on the bottom and liquid methane tank on top. The only thing missing on the bottom right now is the thrust section. SpaceX is still working on it actively, getting it ready for stacking as well. When that will occur is hard to tell as always, but it can't be far along anymore. After that, SpaceX should continue with the typical pressure testing again. This time though with a candidate that should work. I'm saying should here, as SpaceX seems to find new problems every time right now and it is impossible to predict if serial number 3 will actually meet the criteria. What can be said though is that everything has improved again over serial number 1. This gives the best basis yet for some successful testing. 
SpaceX is also nearing completion on the new nose cone hull segment. Contrary to Mark 1, the nose cone will hold far less hardware this time. Most of the systems that were originally planned for the nose tip have already been moved down towards other parts of the prototype. Besides the large Tesla battery packs that have now been installed on the uppermost dome of the tank section, one of the header tanks is inside the top dome as well. Whether this is due to weight reduction in the lower parts of the Starship design or due to other heavy systems still missing in the nose cone is unknown as of now. It's a rather good sign though, as the center of mass problems don't seem to bother SpaceX that much anymore. A new downcomer has been spotted as well and Boca Chica Gal took some really detailed pictures for us again. NASA Spaceflight is doing an incredible job with all of this and if you have not checked them out yet, for whatever reason, do so. They release tons of footage, most of which never makes it onto one of my episodes because it's just too much. This downcomer, for example, for those who do not know, is used to transfer liquid methane down through the main LOX tank towards the engines. So it's the link from methane tank to the engines to be able to transfer both propellant and oxidizer down to those hungry raptors at the bottom of the prototype. According to Reagan, aka Blue Moon Dance 74 on Twitter, SpaceX has been conducting loads of engine tests at their McGregor test range in the past few days. If you combine this with Elon's tweet from a few days ago that a lot of Raptors are coming through McGregor and that they are now operating both the horizontal and the vertical firing stands, this certainly gives an optimistic feel for some flight action in Boca Chica rather soon. Maybe even enough Raptors for Super Heavy. Now let's take a look at our infographic again. For those who do not know, this is where we keep track of the progress done on the current Starship prototype to give a general overview on what's still to be done before the next test. And that's not much anymore, even though serial number 3 is only a few days old. Changed from Thursday's episode is the stacking of the tank section as said earlier. The only part missing for a full tank section stack is the engine bay, which is already being prepared right now as we saw on today's episode. Last but certainly not least, here's the progress on Lab Padre's new cam location. It's a bit further away from the construction site, but much closer to the launch site. The crew is building it right now and it's incredible to see how much effort they're putting into all of this. Without these people, the rocket enthusiast world would be missing one very special thing. A 24-7 live feed directly from Boca Chica. Show some love for them in the comments and if for some crazy reason you don't know about Lab Padre yet, go check out the channel right away. There are no new road closures announced yet and SpaceX seems to still be waiting for the right moment to do some more pressure testing at the launch site. Take your time and make it count is what I'd give as an advice right now. We're keeping our fingers crossed and we want to see this candle lit. Team Boca Chica, you rock! Crew Dragon Demo Mission 2 officially targeted for May. The next one is just a quick progress update, but nonetheless an important one as it will change our access to space after a 9 year long drought. Last time when I talked about the upcoming crewed flight towards the ISS planned for the brand new Crew Dragon, the news was a change of plans. NASA has changed the mission from a short visit to a long duration trip for Bob Binkin and Doug Hurley. Why did NASA do this? Because they need to staff the ISS. After Boeing's failed attempt of docking a Starliner to the ISS, plans that were already not on schedule have slipped down the line even further. And since NASA does not want to use Russian Soyuz flights anymore, the only working alternative right now is SpaceX's Crew Dragon. So NASA has made a major change to the mission layout. Doug and Bob will get a long duration stay on board ISS. And they will get it rather soon. NASA and SpaceX are currently targeting no earlier than mid to late May for the launch. And they have already opened the press accreditation, so they mean it. SpaceX is in final preparations for the flight and everything seems go for the first crewed flight from American soil since 2011 and for SpaceX's new record to be the first private contractor to send people to the ISS. Due to a recent breakout of a certain illness, NASA is taking great precautions though. Binkin and Hurley will be a link between Earth and the ISS for any unwanted passengers, so NASA has restricted access to the two astronauts in preparation for the flight. 
This is very difficult to do though due to the training being conducted in multiple locations. The two SpaceX passengers are currently traveling the whole United States to get to the multiple training facilities located in Houston, California and Florida. This will make any meaningful isolation a logistical nightmare though for anyone involved. Let's hope NASA on one side keeps them healthy and on the other side makes them able to travel so we can actually see the launch happen mid to late May. Another logistical nightmare right now can be learning. In times like these when most of us are forced to stay at home and schools and other faculties are mostly closed or out of reach. This is where my sponsor Brilliant might come in very handy for you. Because Brilliant is a home office school. No need to wander outside, maybe even take public transportation with full body protection. Just a click here and a click there and you've arrived. In one of the best places for learning that can be found on the internet. Brilliant helps you overcome your isolation with weeks and weeks worth of interesting topics such as neural networking or their brand new interactive calculus course. Sharpen your mind and protect yourself from total boredom instead, while you're waiting for everything to settle down in the outside world. Everything an inspiring engineer needs in these strange times. To keep your mind in shape and at the same time support What About It, go to brilliant.org slash whataboutit and sign up for free to get access to over 60 interactive courses for free. And if you choose to get the premium subscription, the first 200 to join through the link will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. Conquer social separation with Brilliant. Links in the description. So this wraps up today's episode of What About It? When will those raptors arrive in Boca Chica and what is that new large building for? As always, tell me in the comments. What a week. I know, normally I just thank my patrons here, but today I'll make an exception. You made me blush several times on the last livestream while driving my funding for a 4K camera that is desperately needed for the production of the show. At the same time though, unbelievable amounts of new additions to the What About It Patreon have shown up as well. I cannot express how grateful I am for all of your support. This is truly motivational and inspirational at the same time. Thank you so much. You're giving me a hard time on this episode reading all those names out correctly, but I'll do my best with pronouncing them. So everyone, please give a warm welcome to David Falk, Walter Lerschner, Aris Draguna, Hunter Eggert, Josh Jackling, Martin Wilcox, Alan Scott Gable and many, many others. You rock! Thank you for watching this episode of What About It? And now would be the appropriate time to hit the like button, subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell button to actually receive a notification when I do my uploads. It's a version of support that doesn't cost a penny and it does help me to produce more and better content. And if you do want to spend your money, consider becoming a patron and get insights into the production of What About It? and chat with me on the Discord. Or you could buy yourself a new shirt on our merchandise store and look like me. There are plenty original designs available in good quality for a low price made by a space nerd for other space nerds. It all helps me to give you the latest and greatest about space and science. I hope to see you on the next episode. Until then, have a great time. Let's hope NASA… Mm, yeah, fuck. <laughs> this is where my sponsor Brilliant might come in… might come? What a week! Oh yeah! What? No. Someone's coming. I guess it's Alex. Then gegessen. What did you eat? Ein Apfelkorn.